Hello students, glad to be back with you again. Today I'll be taking class 7 social science, okay? Class 7 social science and today we will be discussing about the flora and fauna of Nagaland. That is flora means we are talking about the plants, okay? Plants kingdom. Fauna means the animal kingdom. So today we will be discussing about the flora and fauna of Nagaland in your chapter that is chapter 12, okay? So in your textbook, there is chapter 12, so flora and fauna of Naglen. Now, when we talk about the flora and fauna of Naglen, okay? Now, all of us, we stay in Naglen, so we know what kind of animals and plants that we find in our village or in our states and so on, isn't it? Now, all this, okay, all these is possible because when you look around you will find that talking about the plants kingdom and the animal kingdom okay we have different species of plants and animals that are found in Nagaland and all these are possible again because of the climatic conditions okay now if you look at it you will find that in Nagaland okay in Nagaland our climatic condition as it is written there in your textbook okay our climatic conditions it ranges from the alpine okay alpine means we are talking about uh, those very high mountains where no trees can grow okay so the climatic conditions of Nagaland is we have climatic conditions ranging from alpine to the moist hot tropical okay to the moist hot tropical conditions in the foothills then if you look at the mountains okay if you look at the mountains then there also you will find that our mountain ranges are arranged in such a way okay the mountain ranges are arranged in such a way that it creates rain shadow areas okay rain shadow areas again this rain shadow areas in these areas we find some vegetable uh, vegetation and all these vegetations are to do again with the desert okay those vegetations which we find the rain uh, the same shadow areas those vegetations again we find it in the desert regions also so these are the reasons okay these are the reasons why in Naglin we have such a rich flora and fauna so today we are going to discuss about that okay so now first let's go to flora okay so flora that means we are going to discuss about the plants okay so we are going to discuss about the different plants that we find in Naglet. okay now if you go into your textbook okay if you go into your textbook there they have mentioned many plants okay many plants that are found in Naglen. some are found only in Naglen also now in your textbook they have mentioned some bamboos okay in Naglen we have lots of bamboos one spe uh, special species of the bamboo is it is called as the uh, gigantium okay it is called as the gigantium and this bamboo species it is so big okay it is so big that in order to carry even one piece of that bamboo we need to have several strong men okay several strong men needs to carry that single bamboo species okay which is called as the gigantium then apart from this again we also have some smaller species of bamboos okay which are very small as small as your little finger okay but which are again very very strong okay which are very strong and then on top of that it is also as elastic as a fiber uh, glass okay so all this shows that we have different types of flora then when you look at the plants okay when you look at the plants you will find that all the plants they have a different season we have the growing season, the dormant season, the flowering season okay and then the fruiting season and all the plants they undergo this but then in Naglen okay again in Naglen we have some plants which do not go for dormant season okay dormant season mean uh, season means where we can say it is a small uh, almost as dead okay when nothing is happening not even growing or giving out flowers or giving out fruits and so on so that is called as the dormant season and in Naglen we have some plants who doesn't undergo any dormant seasons okay they keep on growing the whole year through so that is also another species of 
flora, okay? Then we also have, regarding the plants, we also have this alder tree, okay? And this alder tree, they grow so fast, okay? They grow so fast. In your textbook, it is written, they outgrow even the fastest growing eucalyptus, okay? So the alder tree, it grows so fast. So that is also another significance of uh, Naglen flora, okay? Then coming to the fruits. In Naglen, again, we have different kinds of fruits. And here, one thing you need to remember is regarding the edible wild fruits, okay? Edible wild fruits means those wild fruits that we find in the jungle, which we can eat. So those are called as edible wild fruits. And you will find again that in Naglen, we have lots, okay, thousands of edible wild fruits. And they even say that this edible wild fruits, they outnumber the domesticated vegetables, okay? Domesticated vegetables means those vegetables that we are growing ourselves. Those are called as domesticated vegetables, okay? So that is again to do with the wild fruits. Then coming to this medicinal plants, okay? Medicinal plants means those plants which we use in order to cure some diseases. So those are called as medicinal plants, okay? Nowadays, we have medicines which are called as Ayurvedic also. So all these are to do with plants, okay? So in Nagaland, again, we also have some medicinal plants which are found in Nagaland. One, we call it as this Chalmugra, okay? And this Chalmugra, what we can do is the people, what they do is they take out the seeds, okay? The seeds will be taken out and oil will be extracted from that seeds and that oil is used for the treatment of leprosy, okay? So that plant is also found in Naglet. Then we also have another medicinal plant which is called as ginseng, okay? And this ginseng, this is an all cure medicinal plant, okay? It can cure for, I mean, like people use this for all kind of ailment or diseases. So all these we find in Naglet. So this is to do with the medicinal plants, okay? Then apart from this, we also have a tree. A particular, sorry, a particular herbs, okay, which is mentioned in your textbook. And there, what happened is this herbs, okay, it gives out fruits. And this fruit, it is a very sticky fruit, okay? It is very sticky. So what the people used to do is, they used to use these sticky fruits in order to uh, catch the rats and so on, okay? So what the people will do is they will put all these sticky uh, fruits in the granary, okay? Granary means where they keep all their grains and all. So they will put the fruits there to make sure that the rats doesn't come because once the rat comes, they will get trapped in that sticky fruits, okay? So all these are called as medicinal plants. So medicinal plants or herbs means those plants which we use in order to cure diseases, okay? So that is to do with that. Then again in your textbook, we have the wild flowers, okay? Wild flowers. Wild flowers means those flowers which we find in the forest, which are not domesticated, which we are not planting ourselves, okay? Which are found naturally in the forest. Those are called as wild flowers, okay? And in Nagaland, again, we have lots of those. One is, we call it as the rhododendron, okay? Rhododendron. Now, this is in scientific word. It is written in your textbook, okay? Rhododendron, which is called as rhododendron macabinium, okay? Macabinium because this was discovered, okay? This tree, this flower tree, it was discovered in Mount Jaffa, okay? It was discovered in Mount Jaffa by, again, it's written there, by the first political assistant of Kohima, Mr. Maccabee. And that is the reason why this rhododendron, it is also called as rhododendron macabinium, okay? So this is also found in Naglet. Then another tree is also another flower. We have uh, one guy that is Mr. Johnston, uh, John Stone, sorry. Now this man, he was the first surveyor, okay? Surveyor of Naglen. That means he was a white man. He came to Naglen in order to survey the area, okay? And this man, again, he discovered, okay? He found the R. John, it's in your textbook, okay, please go through it. R. John Stibinium, that is Tigrinium. This is a beautiful orchid, okay? So 
all these are to do with wildflowers. And all these, again, we find in a forest. Okay? Apart from this, who knows, you may have also discovered new things when you go to the forest and so on. So all this shows that we have different. Our flora is very rich. Okay? In Nagaland, the flora is very rich. Okay? Now, coming to the next one. The next one is to do with fauna. Okay? Now, fauna, as you are all aware, Fauna means we are talking about animals. Okay, so now we are going to discuss about the different, the different species or the different kinds of animals that we find in Nagaland. Okay, now talking about this. Now regarding these animals, okay, wild animals or animals in the wild, as it's written. Nagaland has more than 106 species of mammals, okay? We have different kinds of mammals, and there in Nagaland alone, we have around 106 or more than 106 species of mammals. And all these, again, as we have discussed in the beginning, all these are possible because of our climatic conditions, okay? Because all these plants and animals, they need certain climate in order to survive like human beings, all living things, we need that. So all these we have in Nagaland because of our climatic conditions. So coming to this fauna, that is the animals, okay? Now, in Nagaland, we have different species of mammals, and apart from that, if you look around, you will find that we also have animals like this mitun, and I'm sure you are familiar with that mitun, okay? Then we have this barking deer, Everything is written there in your textbook, okay? You turn to page 84, and there you will find that we have Mitun is there, then the barking deer, okay? Flying squirrel, wild dogs, okay? Then cat, fox, etc. So all these we find in Nagaland, okay? We find in a forest. And all these are possible because of this climatic condition. Now, apart from this wild animals that we find in the forest, okay? Now, being mountainous, since Naglan is a mountainous state, okay, it's a mountainous place, what happens is we don't have that much lake, okay? You all know what a lake is. So, in Naglan, being mountainous, there are only few lakes that are found in Naglan. But, again, one uh, important thing is this lake, they attract the migratory birds, okay? Migratory birds means those birds which are migrating, which are coming here from other places, or which will stop here, they will come from other places, have a rest here, and then they will fly off to another place, okay? So those are called as migratory birds, okay? So here in Naglan, we have not that much lake, but there is one mention of this Shiloi Lake, okay? Now this Shiloi Lake, this is situated at the foot of Saramati Mountain, okay? This Shiloi Lake, you will find it at the foot of the mountain Saramati. And this lake, what happened is, it attracts migrating birds. Those birds which are coming from Siberia, okay? There are many birds which are coming from Siberia and those birds, coming from Siberia, what they do is they will come to this Shiloi Lake, okay? They will take a rest there, sort of, and then from there, they will fly off to other lakes which are found in Manipur and Myanmar, okay? So, this Shiloi Lake, it attracts migratory birds coming from Siberia, which are on their way to the lakes in Manipur and Myanmar, okay? Then, another one is, which is I'm sure all of you, you know about it, okay? This is to do with the bird, which is called as the falcon. Because, because of this bird, even Nagaland, okay? Nagaland is now popularly known as the falcon capital because of this migratory bird, okay? So now this migratory bird, what happened here is this Amur falcon, okay? They visit the Pangti village in Woka district, okay? Every year they visit this village in Woka district. And how they are coming here is every year on its way to South Africa, okay? They are going to South Africa, they, or they are, their plan is to go to South Africa, but what they do is they come and 
they stay in this village, okay? They come to this village and then from this village, they fly off to Russia, China and Mongolia. So all this shows that we attract, even though we don't have that much lake, okay? Those lakes which we have, it attracts the migratory birds, okay? Then another thing is regarding this animal, okay? Apart from these birds, we also have different kinds. We all know that we don't find crocodiles, okay? Crocodiles, we don't find it in Nagaland, but we have, in your textbook it's written, we have its cousin, okay? We have the crocodile cousin lives here in Nagaland. And in your textbook, it is written as the monitor lizard, okay? The monitor lizard and had a very special species of the flying lizard. So even though crocodile we don't find in Nagaland, we have its cousin, that is the monitor lizard or the flying lizard, okay? Then, apart from these animals, we also have different types of spiders, okay? Spiders are there, worms are there, then bees, all those are found in plenty. Then, apart from this, again, the rare bird, okay? The rare bird, which is called as tregopan, okay? This bird, again, we find in Nagaland. And this we can find at the Dzuku. I'm sure some of you might have been to Dzuku, or if not, I'm sure you have seen pictures and all, isn't it? So, what happened here is, we find this bird, okay, tregopan at Dzuku, okay? And this Dzuku, that is, the Dzuku Valley, which is at an elevation of 2,500 meter high, is perhaps the only place in the world, okay? It is perhaps the only place in the world where you can find varieties of tropical and subtropical species of plants. So at Dzuku Valley, you find different kinds of plants, okay? To do with the tropical or subtropical plants. So all this, okay? All this shows that we Nagas, or in Nagaland, as it is written in your textbook, okay? Nagaland is the home of countless, it is the home of countless varieties of plants and animals. So it is our duty, okay? It is, every one of us, it is our duty to make sure, to make sure that we preserve all these things, okay? We make sure, we must make sure that we are preserving the plants and animals the flora and fauna that are found in Nagaland, okay? So, as it is written in the textbook, it is the responsibility of every one of us to preserve, okay, and enrich our environment so that our land remains unpolluted and as beautiful as ever. So, today's chapter, okay, we have discussed about the plants and animals, okay? The plants kingdom and the animal kingdoms that we find in Nagaland. So from all this, now we know that we have different, we have different species of plants and animals that are found only in Nagaland. So the main thing is, our duty is to preserve it. So I hope you will do that, okay? Instead of roaming around, now when you're in lockdown, okay, going to the jungle or the forest and cutting down trees or trying to attract the birds and so on, Okay, we must try to preserve it, okay? So today I hope you were able to understand something from those points. So thank you for tuning in and stay safe.